on the cup, but for your table, okay? Peter Russell Clark, say hello. <laughs> Uh, thank you, thank you. Why are you carrying the meat in the, in the uh, dish? Mate, here? you might think that that's uh, the Flemington favourite. Let me tell you, it's not. That's gravy <laughs> beef. Right. Which is the cheapest and best flavoured beef you could buy. Uh huh. I don't want you to think that because um, I'm talking about beef and horse races that I've muddled them up at all. Because, <laughs> you see, at the moment the beef industry is in a bit of trouble because um, we seem to ship some meat over there that didn't go too well. Uh -huh. But it's not the first time we've done that, because when we shipped over Farlap, it left a bad taste in the Australians' uh, mouths. Now that we've shipped over, sort of like Farlap packaged, it's left the bad taste in the Americans' mouths. Right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's a couple of, because being serious now, there's been a couple of scoundrels in the industry, a couple of rogues, who have not only mucked the industry up for the Americans, for the overseas market, it's mucked it up here, at the home market, because Australians have stopped buying red meat. Mm -hmm. right? now, because they think it's something else, is that Yeah, they saying? reckon yeah. it's kangaroo or camel or donkey. And if it was, it wouldn't matter as long as you labelled kangaroo or donkey. Because, you know, I mean, why not eat kangaroo? Mm. You know, except they're a national emblem and all that sort of thing. But the labelling was the naughty thing, not the product. But we here seem to think that, that every, every piece of meat is going to jump out of the pan at you or something, mm. and that's wrong. A couple of years ago, mate, a couple of years ago it was butter. If you ate a bucket full of, of butter, they reckon you get ingrown toenails or, or a distended bladder or something. Uh, then if you, if you drank milk, you got mammary glands or something. In fact, a lady phoned me <laughs> up. And, a lady phoned me up and said... Mammary glands. I'm sorry, yes. Go ahead. They said, you shouldn't be uh, drinking milk because we're the only mammals that continue to... Uh, to drink milk after we've been weaned. And I said, well, maybe that's why we've been clever enough to get to the moon, because we're the only ones that do it. That could be. Right. Come on over here, right. we'll talk about it. So you're going to talk about the cheap cuts of meat that people can actually uh, um, purchase and buy and make meals out of. Right. Is that true, 60 cents a head for six people? Uh, 60 cents a head? Well, yeah. it could be for, for 600 people, 60 cents a head. Right. Well, with vegetables, it's about 10 bob. But You've got to have a pressure cooker. When my old mum uh, was cooking, we always ate cheap cuts like tongue and, and oxtail, not kangaroo tail, that's oxtail. Why does everybody go like that? I've heard of oxtail for years. It's, if it's cooked right, well, it has to be potted or something, doesn't it? Yeah, stewed, what right. they call it? So it's cut up, yeah. shoved in there, pour us a glass of wine, will you, mate? Sure. That's shoved in a, in a pressure cooker. And when you got engaged in Australia, it was a great trick to be given a pressure cooker. Darren Hinch has been given eight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Darren. He's, been, he's been given more than that, mate. Yeah. Uh, I'll have another one, mate. <laughs> the, oh, yeah, mate. So all you do is shove food in there, meat. That would normally take three and a half hours So what you, you chopped up an oxtail. Right. And, uh, and that beef that you came out here. Gravy beef, Gravy shoved beef. both in. Thanks very much, mate. Um, Two glasses and, of wine and some... Yeah, it doesn't matter. And a bit of this, whatever the herb is, marjoram. marjoram. Shove it in there, whack the top on it, turn the gas on, and vegetables, wherever they are, I don't know where they are. Shove those in. Well, <laughs> yeah. whatever you like. If you like right, carrots, amazing. you put them in, or parsnips, <coughs> or pumpkin, or potatoes, doesn't matter. Handful of those, throw in there, yeah. right? Put in some tomato sauce if you want to, whatever you like. Turn the gas on, leave that for 35 minutes, and it comes out cooked. Like right? that? Yeah. So for 35 minutes... This is the final thing of that? Yeah. Well, that's well, the that doesn't look, that looks very nice. Of course it looks nice. Well, but is that, is that also boko? Yeah, well, it's not really. Osobuku comes from up here. The round it, bone. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah and okay. it means bone with a hole in it. Can you know that because you told me earlier today? A bone, a hole with a bone with a hole in it. Also yeah. boko, right. Yeah. Uh, now, now, what is all of this? Right. These are other parts. Right. So oh, I'm loving this. <laughs> the point I make is a tongue, if you say, how about eating a heart, people vomit straight away, don't they? You're exactly right. I couldn't go that myself. But... You only don't like it because of the visual of it and the verbal. It's called a heart. If it was called a rose, you'd say, how beautiful. So it's your mind that does it to you. So if you get heart, chop it up, mix it with other flavours and serve it in a thing like that because a heart's inside you anyway, isn't it? <laughs> so if that came to the table, it looks a bit like a heart or... No, no, well, that's a, well, an eggplant. Right. Yeah. Aubergine. And so that's served at the table like that, and you chomp into it, 
Suddenly you've eaten a heart and you don't know you've eaten it. Have the you same... eaten heart? Yeah. Well, cooked, what does it taste? Yeah. Good, nice? Yeah, great. It's full yeah. of protein. See, meat is protein. Well, tongue I've had. There's smoked tongue, all sorts right. of tongue. Where's but... tongue? This is tongue. Oh, look what you did. You're terrible. Mm. Look at that. <laughs> Does that look rude? That was supposed to look no, funny. No, it's all right. It looks. It does look funny, actually. It's a. Yeah. And that's steak and kidney pie. So if you got one of those and said, "How'd you like to eat that?" Looks like my brother. I'll put that back. Uh, kidneys don't look too good, but if you whack them in a pie with a bit of steak, with a bit of that stuff, yeah. steak and kidney pie, it's wonderful. In fact, I went to a restaurant in Perth the other day, uh, Ruby's or something. Free meal for me next time I'm there. But uh, they're top, one of their top restaurants, and their main meal is steak and kidney pie. Mm. So people love it. Uh, liver, uh, when I was a kid, everyone ate lamb's fry and bacon. We oh, never oh I love lamb's fry. Lamb's yeah. fry is terrific. That's really we good. always used to eat. Well, all you've got to do is get it, that food, change the shape of it. Or so grind it up, or chop it up, chop or add it, things and do things. Anything. Sure. Change the shape, change the name. Mm. Mm. So you'll eat lamb's fry and bacon, but if I said that was a liver, no, it, I, I understand that. I think that's true. Lamb's frying bacon's nice. Kidneys with steak and kidney pie could handle that. But excuse me, is that what is that? I think that I've, yeah. got, I've got to explain that that is an actual fair dinkum brain. But yeah, I know it's re that's the point I'm making. That looks repulsive, doesn't it? <laughs> looks like someone I know. <laughs> it does. But if it's served up like that, if you just get that, shove it in a blender, zip, with a bit of cream and an egg and all that, an egg all that yeah, sort of right, business, yeah, sure, yeah. it comes out as a little pate. Serve that to people, they say, I love it, I love it, what is it? And you say, brain, they say, oh! Yeah, right. <laughs> so the shot is, don't tell them. So Pour you're saying most of the, all of these things are edible, can be made flavorful, are cheaper, and if you really disguise them right and mix them up with some of the right things, it'll come out delicious. I think that we've got to vary our diet, and by varying our diet within the meat industry, because we don't, if we just eat steak, what happens to all the rest of the beef? Some of this is very good for you, too. Who's your tip for the cup? Uh, Hyperno. Hyperno. Good if Hyperno think. doesn't win, that's going to be Hyperno. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hyperno with the Oso Boco, right? Thank okay, you. thank Peter Russell Clark. We'll be back at the Rio Boco way. Thank you. Thank you.